What's up, Lock 22 Nation? It's your boys, Gobo and Tom, and we're here with another episode of Puck University, hashtag Puck U, and we're talking about the second to last week of the regular season. We got playoff locks, and we got some great competition coming up. So, before we get going, you'll notice the last two weeks, we have sadly not had a guest host, but that changes next week, and we have... The uh, we have a guest of all guests, um, huge celebrity, uh, coming from AMC's Comic Book Men and a member of the Smodco podcast, as well as appearing in the newly released Clerks 3 movie directed by Kevin Smith. Uh, Ming Chen is going to be joining us and talking about his devils. Tom, yeah, what do you think about Ming Chen? I'm excited to meet Ming Chen, uh, over the podcast that we're shooting i mean heard a lot about him um watched a bunch of his stuff excited to see his interest in hockey absolutely yeah and that's you know um you know fortunately yeah we, we were we were lucky to have a you know some mutual connections um i know our producer uh dames has worked with him on a couple of different uh projects and i know that he's worked with project nerd a couple of times and um really nice guy and i know that those those jersey boys are all big hockey fans you know that they they were in the the era of um you know the the 90s and early 2000s devils that were you know that marty brodeur uh era where they were just unstoppable so it's hard to not be excited about the devils in that era right right and i think he's going to bring a lot of energy um about those devils that he's been a fan of for a long time so it'll be good to have him on the show absolutely so shifting gears so from talking about what we're doing next week to talking about uh what's going on right now we've got a couple of news stories going on uh sid the kid sydney crosby um your guy your captain of your of your beloved penguins um hit 1500 goals this last week um in the push for the Penguins to try, try to continue making the playoffs, figured um, as a Pens fan, what are some of your favorite uh, Sidney Crosby moments, Tom? Well, that's kind of the funny thing is I think um, a lot of the people don't like his uh, demeanor when he was first in the NHL, and that's one of the things that I actually enjoyed was his drive and his physicality. Um, as he gets older, he's kind of losing that, but my favorite ones would kind of be the, the aggressive plays that he made, um, back when he was new. Now it's more of the, he's kind of switched gears. He still scores goals, but he really relies on the team. And I just like, I like some of the crazy assists that he can throw out there every once in a while that you just can't believe that he can pull off with such talent. I mean, yeah, he's – we're talking about a Mark Messier winner. We're talking about a two-time Stanley Cup champion. I think probably my least favorite Sidney Crosby moment is I'm a huge fan of USA hockey. And, um, and yeah, that winning goal in the Olympics and the gold medal game, U.S.-Canada, I think that would have been 2008. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's like uh, – or maybe, maybe 2010. I can't remember exactly the year, but it was uh, it was late 2000s. And uh, Sid Sydney he knocked up, um, not knocked in that overtime goal to beat the Americans, broke all of our hearts. But I could tell you, um, probably like the like the most memorable moment that sticks out for me 
is after he was on injured reserve for the entire year, and then he comes back, and it's a, you know, it's a Monday night game against the Islanders, and nobody's really expecting much. He gets two goals, two assists. Penguins win five zero. So I think that yeah, I mean, dude, dude is a generational player. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Um, it's gonna be uh, it, it's really it's interesting to see. I mean, how long do you think he's got left uh, after watching him play all these years? That's tough. That's a tough question. Like we talked about a little bit last week in our show, the way these hockey players, they can just stay playing for so long with all the abuse that he takes because they know that he's that good. They have to focus on him. It would surprise me if he went longer than probably, I'd say another three, four years, maybe. By then, he's like, what, 37, I think, because I think he's 34 or 35 now. He'd be 37 or 38 um, by the time he's that age. I mean, hopefully they win another playoff in there, and he's happy. <laughs> and, you know, he's going to get he's gonna get his share of goals. So I think, I think he'd be happy to leave, you know, late 30s. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, I just hope so he's a penguin. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there's any I don't think there's much chance of him going to another team, but yeah, you never really know. But yeah, I think that that's I think that that's fair. Yeah, you look at his career and his stats and his longevity and I think that yeah, you got another couple of years with him at least. All right. Which is what I think is you got uh Getzel and you got a couple of Zucker, you got a couple of young guys coming up that get to learn from him and be behind him and build the team around him and then when he's gone it's less of a blow. Like you've seen a lot of these other teams that once their players leave, it's just, it's a nightmare for them. It's rebuild phase all over again. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you look at um, like, look at what Washington's going through right now. They're going to miss the playoffs for the first time. And it's just because, yeah, they're so focused around Ovechkin and they don't have, they don't have a core of really young talent, you know? So um, you know, aside from from uh, old Darcy Kemper that uh, that they got from the Avalanche, um, you know they're they're hurting and they're now you now you see you know it's like the first time they've missed the playoffs in what like four or five seasons. So yeah, I mean you can't you got to build up the core. I mean look at the Blues. I mean another another perfect example. I'm wearing a Blues jersey right now because of uh, the Blues are making a. Um, you know, they're out of the playoffs. They have no reason to win, but all the other teams in the central that I need to lose are playing the blues at least once in this next week. Um, so I'm a blues fan, uh, coming up, but, um, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So, so speaking of the central, um, to shift, to shift focus back to my division, um, (laughs) So Kirill Kaprizov, he's bat, he's week to week. He's kind of in and out playing. That being said, the Minnesota Wild are like on fire right now. I think they're what five or six in a row. Um, and then yeah, I was hoping the Blues could could knock them off um, yesterday, but five they to two beat them. So they beat them like two or three days ago. So they haven't oh, had they did. as many in a row. Yeah, the Peng- that's the problem with the Penguins. They can beat the tough guys, but then when it's a cake game, they can't win. So, <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate it. So, so, but what are you, what are your thoughts of Minnesota? I mean, I know that we talked about them a little bit, but you know, like, do you think Kaprizov is the answer? Do you think he makes them like? Because clearly, they're going to make the playoffs. They're going to be a contender this year. Do you think that Kaprizov is like? A, like a cup contending guy or do you think that this is you know still a work in progress i could see him being that guy the problem is is it's going to depend on the magnitude of the injury if he gets re-injured there's a lot there's a lot of things in the air at this point um i think it'd be nice if they could get another guy to kind of take the load off of him because they, they just expect so much of him. Um, I hope that they rest him for the rest of the season. I hope they don't, even though they say he's day to day, I hope they don't play him. Um, cause he, I mean, if they need him for the playoffs that bad, he needs to be well rested 
mm-hmm. in order to carry them far in this. Otherwise, I think if they do, it's going to be a work in progress because he's going to get re-injured or something, and they'll be out early. Also, also interesting, uh, Kevin Fiala dealing with some injuries. So, you know, a lot of their, their scoring is, um, is kind of, is kind of up in the air right now. And it's like, can the great goaltending of Philip Gustafson carry them through to a series win in the playoffs? I don't know. It depends on who they play, but I think that, yeah, they could probably win a series. I don't see them contending for the cup this year. At least, at least God, I hope not. (laughs) So. Anyways, um, let's stop talking about the wild. I know we don't want to give uh, we don't want to give some of our friends back home um, too much to enjoy. Um, Adam Fantilli, we talked about him last week or a couple of weeks ago. Secures the Hobie Baker. Oh, uh, Adam Fantilli secures the Hobie Baker. Um, you know he's probably going to be the number two overall draft pick. Um, you know. I like to think about the Hobie Baker as like a real um like you know like a like a solid basis for like a future ta- for assessing future talent. So I was like wanted to say like who are some of your favorite uh Hobie Baker winners? Yeah, I had that up here. I think if I'm not mistaken, right? Eichel made it. He won it, and then he. I mean, he ended up being. I mean, he's. You, everybody knows who that is. I mean, he's a scorer. He's going to be around for years to come, and he's constantly at the top of the league for points and scoring and stuff like that. So I agree one hundred percent with you that the Hobie, the Hobie Baker Award is obviously not in all cases, but for the most point, it tells you coming in who's going to be a good prospect for the NHL. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at some stats right now and uh, you guys know who I'm going to say. I mean, so, I mean, there's, there's probably, <laughs> there's probably not a lot of buildup, but I want to give a, I want to give a shout out to my man, Paul Korea, ni- class of 93 university of Maine. Um, very briefly an Av, but made, um, made his, made his uh, way as an Anaheim duck. I, uh, but yeah, he was the only freshman to actually win the Hobie Baker Award, uh, with yeah, with twenty a hundred points in thirty nine games, which is insanity. And um, yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, Paul Korea's professional career speaks for itself. But of course, you know who I'm going to talk about, but Kale <laughs> McCarr, um, UMass, dude wins the Hobie Baker one day. And it was like he wins the Hobie Baker on a Friday. Saturday he loses the co- college national championship. Sunday he gets a call from the Avalanche. Say you're going in. Monday night he's in a playoff game against um, the Nashville Predators, and he scores his first goal. Like um, he's won the Norris Trophy. I think that he will win more more Norris trophies. He won the um, the uh, Stanley Cup uh, MVP uh, this last season. Guy's an absolute all star. He's 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 a he's a keystone to the um to the Avalanche success. Um and and yeah, he was he's probably on the on this list of like these great guys who had great careers after winning it. Uh, I think he's probably the you know the most recent uh, Hobie Baker Award winner to really make an impact. Before that was probably Johnny Gaudreau in 2014. Um, but. Gaudreau's career it's been kind of flashing flash in the pan you know it's like he has the uh that Johnny Hockey mentality that Johnny Hockey persona but like after outside of that I don't really I mean he didn't do much with the Flames and then I can't even remember who he plays for now I can't either off the top of my head I was gonna say I think is it maybe Columbus uh I'm not 100% sure I'm sure we could fact check that but um but yeah, uh, I, that's Kale McCarr, clearly. Um, su- absolute superstar. One of my favorite players. Okay. <laughs> we got a controversial one. Uh, one that uh, producer Dames, let's hope he leaves it in the show, but we're going to talk about his team, the Seattle Kraken. Um, second year in the league, they made the playoffs. Um, what are they going to do with it? 
Tom, what do you think? It all depends on who they play. I mean, we I know, know this. Right? <laughs> we we know this. <laughs> um, I mean, I think they got a good team. I think they got a young team for the most part. They got some good scores. Um, their goalkeeping is on point for the most part, but yeah, they got to uh they got a they gotta have a good matchup. If they have a a tough matchup, I think I think they will falter a little bit, but yeah. Playoff hockey's a little bit different. We all know that. So I mean they could rise to the occasion and uh it's gonna be fun to watch, that's for sure. Yeah, and I did I did uh I did fact check a little bit while you were talking. Uh Johnny Gaudreau does in fact play for Columbus. So I was correct. I'm I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> but I completely agree. I think that um you know mm-hmm. they got <clears throat> Um, they got Burakovsky, they got Geeky, they got Jordan Everly, they got, you know, they got uh, second and third line scoring, and then they have a decent, um, <laughs> they got a decent goalie um, with with uh, Philip Grubauer and whoever the other guy is. So I mean, they they have players, but here's here's the thing is that it's like they're going they're going from regular season where that flash in the pan speed stuff is really You can add up points quickly. You can overwhelm teams and you can hang in there with teams, you know, with that, with that secondary scoring, but it's like, do they have enough gas to actually win a series? I think that, so it's like, if you look at it right now, if they can catch LA, uh, they can get into that third seed. And then that means they're playing Calgary. I think that they can, they can, or no, they're playing Edmonton, not Calgary. Sorry. So it's like Ed, Edmonton is – they were tough in the playoffs last year, but I think that's a winnable series for Seattle. Uh, if they don't catch L.A., then that means they're playing either Vegas or um, hopefully the Avalanche. Um, and I don't see them winning those series. So, um, you know, I think uh, Vegas is too is too much. And then, yeah, me and Dames are going to have, have the, mo- the ultimate love-hate relationship um if uh if they end up playing the avalanche but yeah if, if it depends on what who wins the central but it means that either avalanche dallas or uh, minnesota uh i honestly i don't see seattle winning any of those series <laughs> i'm sorry to say i think that those are those are all really solid those are really solid matchups and i'm kind of hating on edmonton a little bit who do you think that they're gonna end up getting stuck with right now i think la holds on to that third spot and i think la plays edmonton um and I think that uh, the Kraken will get the top wild card spot, so they'll play the winner of the Central, and I think they're probably playing us. Yeah, that's that's if I had to I had to make a prediction. I know there's a there's a lot of chips still to fall, but I think that I think it's going to be Seattle Avalanche, Seattle Minnesota. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would, that would I, agree, I think that's going to be a heck of a series, especially. The first- the first and Dames cameo, go. maybe, maybe um, I'll make a deal with Dames. Yeah, if the Abs and and Kraken end up playing each other in the opening round, then then we're gonna have to have him on for at least one 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 episode before the series is over. Um. Anyways, uh, so the Kraken, uh, good luck to them. I I um I think they're a fun team. I hope that they do well. Um, but yeah, I think that yeah they they got a lot of they got a lot of they got an uphill battle in the playoffs, but. It'll be Dame's first experience with playoff hockey. I'm very excited for that. Me as well. I think it's gonna be fun for everybody. Oh yeah. So <laughs> so speaking of playoff hockey, there's only one team that's followed by the by the members of this staff that's not in yet. Cause we got Minnesota's confirmed in, New Jersey's confirmed in, the Kraken are confirmed in, the Avalanche are confirmed in. Penguins still fighting for that spot. Tommy, tell us about your penguins. What's what's going on in the in the the what three rivers? Well, I want to go on record here. And I want to say two or three weeks ago when I told you guys that Florida was going to come back and take the number one spot in the playoffs in the wild card, I was one hundred percent correct. They have, in fact, taken number one wild card spot. <laughs> Who could have guessed that Flo- that Florida was going to be a, a competitor in the East this year? That's disappointing uh, to say the least. I mean, um, 
I just I honestly I think I, I I you know I hope I hope I don't offend any uh any Panthers fans, but they're just kind of a boring team to me. <laughs> I think that they're I think that they just have kind of a generic talent, a generic uh a generic uh scheme, and I just don't see them beating anybody in the East. I don't. If I think if they do make it, if New York and Pittsburgh doesn't knock them out, they're out first round easy. I mean, they're not. Yeah, they're not going. And it would it wouldn't surprise again not to offend any Panthers fans, but I mean, it would not surprise me if they get swept in the playoffs. I mean, just with the yeah. teams that are already clinched and who they would be stuck playing, I don't think that they would have a shot. Yeah, because I mean, they're either playing Boston or um, or uh, Carolina, right? I believe so. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, I think those are the one seeds right now in the East. Yeah, no, it's it's a tough matchup all the way around. I just yeah, I don't see Florida doing much, but we're, I mean, what is what does the Panthers have to do to 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 push over the hump here? I mean, you said they beat the Wild, which is a huge win, which we really appreciate. You guys are playing the Wild again this week. Um, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be rooting for the for the Penguins uh, pretty hard on that game. The Peng- I mean, we got to play like we play. We, we we lost four to three to the Bruins, the best team in the NHL right now. Mm-hmm. We play them well. We beat the Wild four to one. Then we beat Detroit five to one. But then we play. Detroit three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, seven to four, and we were tied four to four going into the third. I mean, it's just we got to play three periods of hockey. That's the biggest thing we have right now. And we've talked about it several times because you're kind of in the so same boat uh, with your give. You, you, we have, in my opinion, one good goaltender. The other one, he is – Yari is kind of hit or miss. DeSmith is usually the one that's more solid, but I think it's kind of flipped roles. That's where we're kind of faltering is we need to find – we need to have something like – I hate to bring him up because we bring him up all the time, but like the Bruins. I mean, you got Olmark who Mm -hmm. can – obviously he is premier goaltender. And then you have Swayman, which I believe is his backup goaltender. Wins the sixty third win to clinch the record. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you got to have that. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's I think that that's one of the scariest things about the Bruins is is that they they're better than most teams in the NHL without their top five or their starting goalie, and they're still better than most teams in the NHL. Like, that's like, insane. It, I mean, we we got. So good. The nice thing with the Penguins, we got the last two games, we got the Blackhawks, and we got the Blue Jackets. Okay, those are wins. In my opinion, those both should be wins. Um, and then it's basically it's Florida and New York's to lose. Mm-hmm. We basically got to win the next two, and we got to hope that uh, the Islanders and the Panthers lose at least one or both of the games. Yeah, I think that uh, I think there's a good chance. I think that those I think that those two um, those two kind of gimme wins at the end I think are are gonna push you over the edge. If I'm being honest, I I I don't know. I've said it a couple of times. I really like the Penguins to um, to make the playoffs. I I think that um, there's they got a good shot. Florida plays uh, just to keep give you guys the information. They play Toronto and the Canes, and I don't think they'll beat the Canes. Those are, yeah, that's Toronto's pretty tough too. So, I mean, there's that. And then while we're at it, let's just check to see who uh, the who Islanders got. And I think they got a tough, tough couple games. They got, they got one tough game. They got the Capitals and then they got Montreal, which should be a win for them. So, I mean, if I had to guess right now, I'd probably say Islanders are going to, I think they'll move up to the one spot. Penguins two, and I think the Florida Florida's going to get knocked out. If I had to wager, I you know what I think that's I don't think that's a terrible pick. Um, I think yeah, but that you know what that that leads to that's Boston 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 Pittsburgh in round one. I know, and like I said, we played we play yeah Boston very well. 
you know what? Playoff <laughs> hockey, anything can happen for sure. Yeah. So, um, the Avalanche, um, you know, I, I talk about them almost constantly uh, to anybody who will, you know, I'm like Forrest Gump. I like talk to people on the bus about the Avalanche. Um, so we're, they're playing right now. Uh, it's two to two against Anaheim. Uh, it should be a very winnable game, but it's our fourth game of our California road trip. We won the first three, including a very huge win over um, over the L.A. Kings uh, last night. Uh, which it was an ugly game. We got outplayed, but we found a way to get those greasy goals and, and we, we got a win on the road. And so that being said, the avalanche are currently sitting in first place of the central division. Uh, the problem with that is um, Dallas and Minnesota keep winning. Like, so we can't get any kind of, so we basically all three teams have like the same amount of points. Um, so we have one game in hand, which as long as we keep winning is going to, is going to win us the division, but we got, we have kind of a tough schedule is like Dallas has three games left and two of them are against the blues. Uh, Minnesota has that one tough game against um, Pittsburgh, but our last four games, we got Anaheim tonight, which is the easy one, uh, which it's tied right now going into the third. Um, We have, uh, we play the Oilers who are a playoff team. Uh, we play the Jets, who are a playoff team. And we play the Predators, who are uh, fighting for a, are fighting for a uh, playoff spot as well. The Jet, the Jets, the Jets, and, and um, the Jets are are a fight are fighting. They're not in yet. I don't want to. I don't want to damper your mood or ruin your mood. But the Minnesota Wild do not play the Penguins. Oh, they don't. They do not. They play the Blackhawks, the Jets, and the Predators are their last three games. Huh. Okay. My bad. I thought they, uh, I must've looked at the schedule for last week. So yeah. All right. Fact, fact checked. Um, but yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. So like I said, we just got to keep winning. We control our own destiny. I know that's a term we use when we talk about the NFL quite a bit. Um, (laughs) but yeah, as long as we, we win these four last four games, we're guaranteed to win the, the division. So let's just do that. But like you said, though, Winnipeg is still fighting for a playoff spot and the Wild have to play them. So that yeah, could work in your we, favor for sure. And we play them, too. Yeah, we play Winnipeg. Uh, that's I'm actually going to that game on Thursday. Um, it's the, the Avs uh, home. It's the Avs regular season home finale. So we're hoping to win. They do a thing where it's called uh, the shirt off our backs where they select uh, like 25 random fans and they bring them down to the ice after the game and a player will come up and take off his jersey and sign it and give it to you. Oh, that's sweet. I know. So we're hoping to win. We've we've tried a couple of times, but yeah, I mean, it's 25 fans out of like 15,000. So it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty low. Chance it'll actually happen. <laughs> but, but you know what? Crazier things have happened, um, you know, to all sorts of people so somebody's got to win also um uh another thing i talked about um our goalie woes and to kind of go back to what you were saying about the the pens and kind of how they they don't have a solid backup so the abs um we have a solid backup he's just been injured but he's actually playing right now pavel francu uh pavel pavel francu's um we just call him frankie yeah, he is uh, the Avs, um, you know, contracted backup goalie, um, super solid backup. He just has injury problems. And so if he's healthy for the playoffs, I really like our I really like our chances uh, of him and, and Gorgiev uh, together because we got it done with with uh, Frankie and Kemper last year. So I think that this this goalie tandem is at least as good. Yeah, and the nice thing with that is uh, you're getting him at the right time. Exactly. And he's gonna have and he's gonna have a game under his belt before he's thrown into the gauntlet of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, we're gonna play we're gonna play Georgie as much as is humanly possible when the playoffs come around, but it's like, yeah, at some point you get those back to backs. If he's be if he's banged up, if we got like a three to one uh series lead, just like throw Frank in there. Yeah, see what the hell see what happens. Um all right. Locks of the week. We can just skip this segment this week. Um, I got all three games wrong. 
Uh, we were tied. We both had a record of nine and six. Um, I am now nine and nine uh, <laughs> after picking all three teams incorrectly, uh, including the Seattle Kraken, which was thought of before as a rock solid pick. So here we go. Um, Tom, you got two out of three, right? Uh, the only thing you whiffed on was the Tampa Bay Senators game. Um, or was it Tampa Bay and Senators? It was somebody. In yeah. The yep, yeah, it was. Okay, cool. I thought that was my first Sherlock. <laughs> right. Uh, but you got the other two correct, including uh, including uh, the Avalanche. You picked them to beat the uh, San Jose Sharks on Thursday, and the Avs put up seven goals in that game, so not a terrible pick. Uh, much appreciated for the support. Tom, you sit at 11-7. and seven. You got a two-game lead over me going into the last game of the regular season. So big picks this week. Um. I'm going to let you start. All right. I appreciate that. I'm going to go with a couple of teams that I haven't selected yet. And the number in the first one uh, you will appreciate. Um, it's going to be Washington versus uh, the Islanders. And you can already bet. I bet you know which one I'm going to pick. Um, I'm going to pick Washington strictly because I need the Islanders to lose for the Penguins to make the playoffs. <laughs> okay, okay. Washington and the Islanders. Hang on, let me look this game up. And it's in it's in Washington. Okay. We'll see how that goes. So, and of course, I picked um Oh, okay. It was I got the the Blackhawks are playing the Penguins. So, yeah, my first my first pick. I wrote down Minnesota. I meant to write down Chicago. Okay, that was the problem. Is I had I picked the I picked the Penguins as my first lock. Um, and I must have been looking at the wrong logo. But yeah, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, they're playing uh Chicago on the eleventh in Pittsburgh. Uh, you guys are fighting for your playoff lives. It should be a blowout. I gotta go. I gotta go with a uh, with a little bit safer of a pick uh, to, to try to gain some ground on you here. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're we're. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that you can continue to participate through the in the postseason a little bit. Um, who's your second pick? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, another team that I haven't selected yet this uh, season. Um, the L.A. Kings versus Vancouver. I'm going to pick the Kings to win. At least I don't think I've picked them yet. Yeah, I don't think so either. All right, so Vancouver at LA. And you're going with the Monarchs. The Mighty Monarchs. I like it. Um, Yeah. And it's it's not even, I mean, it seems like a safe pick uh, because Vancouver is trash, but they win sometimes out of nowhere. Uh, I've gotten burned picking against Vancouver before this season. So, yeah, that's – I mean, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that goes down. Uh, my second pick is um, – so, Boston has no reason to continue winning, but they do, and they're playing against Washington at home. Um, I say that, uh, yeah, Boston – I'm picking Boston against uh, against the Capitals. That was also on the 11th. Okay. All right. Tommy, give me your last one. I got to do it. Um, I'm going to go with my Pittsburgh Penguins. Last game of the season. Season finale to lock in a playoff spot at Columbus. Pittsburgh's going to win that game. Okay. They should. <laughs> I certainly hope so, man. That's going to be depressing if they don't win that game. But yeah, yes, they, it will. they certainly <laughs> should. Um, so I'm picking, uh, and it's actually a playoff matchup because uh, Tampa Bay and uh, Toronto are the only matchup that's been confirmed so far, even though there's only one, one week left in the season. Um, so 
Tampa Bay uh, is hosting on also on on uh, Tuesday. Uh, Tampa Bay is hosting the Maple Leafs. Uh, I'm gonna take in Tampa. I'm taking Vasilevsky in this game. Um, you know, we got we got a lot of offensive firepower for Toronto. We got a lot of good defense with uh, Tampa. Uh, I'm taking the I'm taking the Bolts. So that's my my last my last regular season last regular season uh, lock of the week for both of us. That is a great selection. I like it. All right. Um, top players of the week. I'll get us started. Um, Foster Knock, really easy choice. Um, not only was he the top star selected uh, by the NHL, but he um, earlier today uh, scored his 60th goal of the season um, and got a hat trick on the same goal. And also um, the Bruins... Uh, secure the record with their 63rd win of the season um with the I think what did they put up they put five they put like five or six up on um on the flyers today five three it was five, five three was the final yeah. okay yeah I caught the very very end of it right before the Avs game started so uh David Posternock, uh number one star the number one star of the week for me my first star I actually have three of them. Okay, okay. And the reason being is because, again, this week, we had three people with hat tricks. All right. We like that. Had a hat trick. He did. Uh, Pasternak had a hat trick. Plus, I had to give him a little bit of credit because last week when they played and they beat us four to three, uh, Pasternak had a, another hat trick against the Penguins last week, so he's had two weeks in a row where he's had a hat trick in a game. Yeah, dude really wanted those sixty goals. <laughs> so I had to give him that one, and then also uh, this is a shout out to our friend James. That's a guest. Uh, if he told me I didn't say this, I would be hung. Just kidding. Uh, Mercer for the New Jersey Devils had his first hat trick. Good on Mercer. All right. So I had to give I had to give a shout out to Mercer there. Yeah. You know, and then shout out to to Ming Chen also as a as a Devils fan if he's watching. Uh yeah, your boy your boy got it done. He made the list. Um yeah, my uh my other two picks are uh, are less sexy, a little bit more obvious. Um actually, well, actually my third pick, my third pick for uh for my top players of the week is is kind of a is kind of a wild card, but uh, Sidney Crosby, obviously reaching 1500 goals. Um, you know, that's a, uh, that's, that's a milestone. So I would say that's a huge, uh, that's a big week for him. So I'll give him second star honors. And then my third star, I'm picking Denver native, big deal. Seth Jones, his dad, Popeye Jones played for the Nuggets. Um, yeah, a little factoid. Um, and after, Watching the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup in 1996 when he was a little boy, Seth and his brother, who also plays in the NHL, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, uh, decided to dedicate their uh, sports careers to becoming hockey players, and they made the NHL. Uh, so Seth Jones, he plays for the Blackhawks, um, who are terrible, and he netted two goals while playing one and a half periods before he got injured in a devastating loss to the Seattle Kraken. I think it was seven to three was the final. So um, would that have been a win for the Blackhawks? Probably not, but two goals in a period and a half from a defenseman who then gets injured. Um, I, I think it's pretty impressive. So I gave him that third star honor. Plus he's from Denver. That is impressive, especially from a defensive man. I mean, that's, that's two fast goals. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sir. And I guess a good team who was beating the shit out of them. Um, all right. Well, that's the show, everybody. Uh, Tom, you got anything else, uh, swimming around that beautiful, uh, newly shaven head of yours? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, like I said, we got a lot of good hockey left to, to see before, um, playoffs. There's some teams that still need to clinch and there's some movement that can happen. So, uh, don't quit watching now. Mm -hmm. And then next week, 
Um, like I said, I um, you know co uh, AMC Comic Book Men, um, Ming Chen, member of Smodco, uh, friends with Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes and all those guys uh, from you know those the Kevin Smith movies that we all know and love. Uh, so I mean, yeah, huge huge guest appearance. We're very excited to have him, and we're going to talk about the playoffs. So I don't know, uh, Dames, if you want to add in a a, a a uh you know like what uh what's his name jim moore in there saying playoffs but yeah well that'll be our first ever playoff show is going to be next week we can talk about the first round matchups and what it's gonna what's gonna happen it's gonna be super fun to have ming on the show so make sure you check it out uh and make sure you're checking out all the other shows on the lock 22 we got uh comic knowledge and uh two marks and a spark um and yeah they're they're cranking out lots of great content as well all right. Well, good night, everybody. Yep, as always, good night, everybody, and uh, hashtag fuck you.